OK TV award lovers, we're going to have a special slugfest here with Gold Derby's contributors. This is not going to be necessarily Emmy-centric. It's going to be focused on the TV Critics Awards. And there are two of them, remember. There is the uh, uh, Television Critics Association and the Critics' Choice TV Awards. Um, there's an overlap significantly of the membership, but yet they're very distinct. They have different categories, different classifications. And this year, the Critics' Choice TV Awards are coming much earlier in an, in an attempt to influence the Emmys better. Now, Riley Chow, you have done, I have to say, an award-worthy job at Gold Derby uh, in writing about all of these. Let's start with your take on who you think the real winners are from who emerge as the uh, big winners of these both of these awards. Yeah, so it was weird because there are some shows that did really well at one awards, and then the next day, then they just didn't get any nominations. So shows like Brooklyn Nine Nine or Silicon Valley did really well at one of them, but not both. Uh, what did really well at both, I would say, is the Big Bang Theory, which uh, this whole season has been kind of doing really well in the nominations, but hasn't been able to win anything. So uh, they got Jim Parsons back in for the CCA Awards, and they actually won last year without him even getting nominated. So now that he's nominated again, then that's even more support. Uh, other things that did well are Veep. Uh, Veep didn't get uh, Tony Hale in, but they did... Uh, oh, sorry, they did get Tony Hale in. They didn't get uh, Anna Klumski in, but they did uh, get pretty much everything else. Uh, Louis. Uh, had only aired a few episodes of a season by the time that the Critics Awards came out, yet it uh, got nominations in every category that it did last year. So that's pretty good. Uh, I found it weird how the CCA Awards, they came out so quickly. They came out two weeks earlier than last year. I mean, I didn't have uh, an article in advance written or anything. Uh, it seems like they came out just to get ahead of the Critics' Choice since they came out the next day. Right. And I guess the, uh, the Good Wife also did really well. Uh, they got into a lot of categories that they haven't been in years. And the Americans did well. That got uh, top program awards from or nominations from both Critics Awards. Last year it only had two nominations in the Creative Arts Emmys, of course. So suddenly now it's a contender. Or at least, you know, it had, we've got a leg up as we head into the Emmys. Addressing your point about um, how strangely some of these shows did well at one Critics Awards and not at the others. Uh, Masters of Sex did very well at Critics Choice, did not do well at TCA. The Normal Heart did extremely well at Critics Choice, did not do well at uh, TCA. Silicon Valley, the same thing. Uh, Marcus, what's going on there? Why is there uh, consensus in some uh, senses between these awards and then total uh, misalignment in others? You know, I think part of it has to do with the TCA awards not having as many categories. They don't even have supporting categories. Whereas the, the Critics' Choice Television Awards, they have basically everything that the Emmys do. The only thing they combine is the guests. So instead of having a, a male guest and a female guest, they combine those. Um, also, I wanted to point out that you know a lot of shows that just had really, really good seasons were honored, like The Good Wife, even like Survivor. Both Critics Awards nominated Survivor, and I don't know if that's, you know, maybe foretelling of what could happen at the Emmys because the Emmys have just snubbed the show years and years and years now. But but yeah, overall uh, we're seeing a lot of similarities between these two. Um, but wait a minute, though. You know, often the Critics Awards have a high emphasis on whatever is cool right now. That's usually something you can count on, right? Game of Thrones, the coolest show on TV, Riley. What happened? Yeah, Game of Thrones, uh, they kind of fell off. Last year, they got Nikolai Costa-Valdo and Amelia Clark in. This year, they didn't get Peter Dinklage in. Uh, they never really liked him either. He only got in for the second season. He didn't even get in for the season that he won the Emmy. Uh, this year, they only have Diana Rigg nominated at the Critics' Choice after the show won Best Drama last year. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, honestly, because uh, it seems to be doing just as well as ever with the critics. Perhaps it's just they don't like the performances, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, girls, we, we knew that that was kind of waning, right? And we knew that, and Downton Abbey is losing its cool factor with them, right, Marcus? I mean, some of the other, and the yeah. homeland is kind of dipping in general since Damien Lewis is gone. 
Uh, those right. are, that was not a surprise. Now joining us here is Charlie Bright. Hey, Charlie. Howdy. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Now, awesome. now, we're, now we're talking about these uh, Critics Awards and some of the big surprises. Modern Family did not do well at either Critics Awards, which is surprising considering that many individual critics will say that they believe that the latest season is actually its best season ever. What's going on here at these Critics Awards, Charlie? Well, my guess is that the critics want to take advantage of the Critics' Choice Awards to try to prop up people that they think um, aren't, aren't, aren't going to be as easily noticed by the Academy. I mean, we saw that last year with, I think, both TCA and uh, Critics' Choice going to Tatiana Maslany. Um, and I think that they're really going to try... They're taking advantage of their... Uh, position to try to elevate those contenders and in their minds Modern Family is completely safe uh, uh, was probably still the front runner to win comedy series for uh, an, uh, an almost unprecedented fifth year in a row so that that would be my view of how they're probably viewing that their, their mindset is Modern Family is probably going to get in let's try to get some let's try to recognize some other people and get some momentum going for them okay now Charlie I need you to Tilt your computer screen slightly forward so we see more of your lovely face. You're anchored too low there. Okay, that's gotcha. Great. There. Um, any more thoughts, Riley I, or Marcus? Yeah, I agree with everything he just said. But then I just keep coming back to this Big Bang Theory thing. Um, the the Critics Choice TV Awards um, and the TCA. They said that it was the winner last year for best comedy series. I think it tied at TCA with with Parks and Rec. But again, why why do they keep nominating Big Bang Theory over and over and over, snubbing something like Modern Family? Is it because of what what Charlie just said that that the Emmys are going to give Modern Family wins and they're maybe not going to give Big Big Bang Theory wins? And so this is their way of maybe saying, hey, Emmys, you know, pay attention to this show too. My theory is because if you've ever seen the membership of these organizations, uh, they're a bunch of young male nerds, right? And uh, that's that's what Big Bang Theory is. What's, you know, what we love about these awards is when they recognize shows that we go, huh? And I'm talking here about Broad City. Charlie, wasn't that, what the hell is Broad City? That sounds like a stop on the Metro for me. Um, <laughs> um, oh, Broad City, that's the, um, that's the, uh, is that the Comedy Central show? Riley, what's Broad City? Yeah, I watched the pilot. It's a Comedy Central show. It's about two uh, young women. I think they, you know, write and produce the show as well. It's one of those kind of deals. And what are they? They're they're poor, and uh, I guess they're funny. They're just trying to get by, and they're, they're kind of hipster. Um, I don't know. It it was okay. <laughs> I find it, the fact right. that they're recognizing obscure shows like that is pretty cool, right? Yeah. It's the whole Orphan Black thing from last year. When that got nominated, I had never heard of Orphan Black or Tatiana Maslany. And then she starts winning. So now part of me wonders, should I just should I just pick Broad City to win for Best Actress, <laughs> Alana Glazer, and Best Comedy Series? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. That's a lesson to take home from that. Mm -hmm. And speaking of other people that maybe have never you know, heard of before, in the Best Comedy Supporting Actor... Um, Albert Tsai for Trophy Wife. Am I the only one that didn't know who that was? I didn't even know Trophy Wife was a show. What the hell is this? <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an ABC sitcom that got canceled. Um, apparently, I think, I think he's a little kid on that show. Does anyone yeah, know for sure? Okay. Yeah, I watched the first, I don't know, 10 episodes of that show. Uh, he's very good. I don't know that he would make my top six, but it's um, nice to see him recognized. I find that with the Critics' Choice Awards, they they try so hard to recognize people that won't be recognized anywhere else. They sometimes snub people who are actually a lot more deserving, or they'll find some obscure show, and then they'll go with the most obscure person possible while snubbing somebody who still won't get nominated for the Emmys. Um, I don't know. Like I just watched that show, Looking, and they oh, gave awesome. uh, the show... Well, I liked it. They gave the show one nomination in Guest Actress, but she's like the fifth person I would have nominated from that show, so I like that the show is <laughs> recognized, but it's just really weird for something that's not going to do well to Emmy to get a nomination here, but it's something strange. So, Charlie, have you made your predictions yet? What's going to win some of these awards? What do you have out front in your own predictions? 
Uh, for Critics' Choice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I, I've been updating a bunch of them. Um, my guess is uh, I think Breaking Bad's still probably going to win a, a drama, but it's it's so hard to it's so hard to tell at certain points. So I gotta I gotta update mine. <laughs> okay. Well, who's got who who's made some predictions that they feel more confident about? Uh, jump in here. Yeah, for drama right now I have Breaking Bad winning, but this is the the this broadcast. Is the next choice we're talking about. Okay. Right, and this is the broadcast television journalist. Um, so maybe The Good Wife is in this more than we think, because The Good Wife is a broadcast show, and it had this breakout season that everyone was talking about. People are still talking about it. Um, but I just think that since Breaking Bad ended this year, and it was the cool show, the critics are the coolest people in the world, at least according to them, they're going to go with Breaking Bad again. It, it tied last year with Game of Thrones. You know, they always tie at this, at this CCPA. Everything gets a tie. I don't want that this year. I want them to pick a winner and have one winner go on stage. Uh, they do that at the Critics' Choice Movie Awards very often, too. They go, oh, it's a tie, it's a tie. And it's usually between, uh, I remember one year, what was it, Sandra Bullock and Meryl Streep. It's like the two great grand divas. They couldn't dare turn down one of them. So um, they they have a rather dubious uh, uh policy of how the accountants count things. They, they, they provide for a wider gap, let's say, for, uh, between things that, that others might call a tie. And I think they do it to be diplomatic. Um, Riley, what do you have out front here for some of these? Yeah, things? I just that for the same reasons that Marcus already went over. By the way, Marcus, this whole broadcast uh, critics' awards, don't take that too seriously. Let me just explain what that means. What Marcus is referring to, first of all, is the Critics' Choice Television Awards are bestowed by the Broadcast Television Journalist Association. And the reason the organization is called that is because it's a spin-off of the Broadcast Film Critics Association. And the reason that was called Broadcast initially was because it was primarily made up of these critics, in quotes, of the broadcast channels, the affiliates, let's say ABC affiliate in St. Louis and the, and the uh, CBS facsimile in Nashville. This was the junket press. This was what used to be the junket press. So when you watch uh, at home and you see uh, a movie star interviewed uh, and over their shoulder is the uh, some promotion for the movie, that's, that's usually a junket setting where that star, where Hugh Jackman sits in his seat all day long and us journalists go in. We've all done it many times through the rotation. We get uh, four or five questions and then we're thrown out. And the junket press used to be largely the broadcast TV affiliates. Now, since the explosion of the internet, what's happened is uh, more websites, etc., in there. They've kept that name through the years. Now there are far fewer of the broadcast uh, channels in the outer lands doing the junket circuit because, frankly, the NBC affiliate in Nashville can no longer afford to send their journalists there, or the studio no longer agrees to comp uh, the, the flight and the hotel. But you have this word remaining. When you look at the actual membership of the Critics' Choice Awards, uh, the Broadcast Journalist Television Association, what you get are uh, a lot of smaller websites. Very surprising what it means. So, it, it, so don't take that word too seriously. Uh, who else has got some predictions? We should definitely talk about Matthew McConaughey versus Brian Cranston. Okay. Both, what do you, both what do you guys think? are nominated at both Critics' Choice Awards, and they're both going to be nominated at the Emmys. This could be the battle of you know 2014. McConaughey versus Cranston. Um, where do you guys stand in, in terms of the critics? Who will they go with of these two guys? I'd say uh, Matthew McConaughey, definitely. For the TCA, at least, uh, there's this critic called uh, Dan Feinberg. He's a board member for the association. Uh, I remember last year, as soon as the nominations came out, he said, Tatiana, Tatiana Maslany is winning. And that was kind of before she had gained any steam. This year, he says that Matthew McConaughey will get 85, 90% of the vote. Uh, I trust him. <laughs> Charlie, what do you think? I, I agree. I think Matthew McConaughey is uh, probably going to take that. He has the he has the hot show, the the hotter show. Uh, he's coming off an Oscar win. It's 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 almost like it's just it's too perfect a chance not to do it. So it it'd be it'd be too crazy of them not to do it. So I think they'll probably they're probably going to just go on that bandwagon. I think so, too. I think his cool factor is sky high. I don't think he can be denied here. But, uh, Marcus, your, your heart still pounds peanut butter for Breaking Bad, right? You're a diehard fan. 
It does, but I, I am predicting McConaughey. Um, and plus, you know, Brian Cranston has won this twice already, so I really don't see the critics giving him three. I see, I see them moving on this year. And McConaughey does seem like the, the obvious choice to move on to. Mm -hmm. What's going on with Masters of Sex? Uh, you guys, sh you know, I, I'm very curious about this because how seriously should we take it at the Emmys? Uh, Critics' Choice gave it a lot of love. TCA did not. Uh, I didn't particularly care for the show, but I only watched about two episodes. I you know, Shame on me. I should be a little more thorough and, and watch it, but quite frankly, nothing was happening those first few episodes. I kept going, come on, come on, come on. So, I, so don't trust my judgment on this at all. You guys, um, let's go back to you, Riley. Uh, Masters of Sex, looking forward into the Emmys. What have we learned, if anything, from the Critics' Awards looking forward to the Emmys? How is it going to do there? Yeah, Masters of Sex, I think, has been a huge question mark all season. Uh, back at the end of the year, when the critics were giving their top ten list, it actually appeared on I think the fifth most top ten list of any show, and yet when the TCA came out with their nominations, it couldn't even get nominated for Best New Program against Sleepy Hollow. Uh, so that was really odd, I thought. Uh, in terms of the Emmys, I don't know. It, it seems like on paper it sounds great. It's Showtime. It's got uh, it's got Michael Sheen. It's a period piece. It seems really prestigious. Um, I just don't feel it. Uh, that it's going to do really well, but that's not really based on anything. I, although something to note is that uh, it seems last year particularly, I thought that the Americans and the newsroom, they might do really well in a bunch of craft categories, uh, acting categories, but they might just miss the top six for best drama. What ended up happening was the shows that were nominated for best drama just got more nominations everywhere while the Americans and the newsroom didn't really get anything. So I'm wondering if Masters of Sex, is it maybe the eighth show that voters intend to watch, which means that they'll just never get to it, and then it won't get anything. I think that's certainly possible. Rodley, how is the Americans going to do with these awards? There's, there is a consistent message coming through this year that, that they really still like it. They're pushing it. They, they, they have an agenda here. Does it have a chance of winning a major category? The Americans is great. Uh, I think it, it should get in a number of categories. I think that it'll do worse at the Emmys this year than it did last year. Uh, I think it'll get no nominations, actually, because last wow. year the only two that it got were main title theme music, which it's no longer eligible for, and Margot Martindale. Last year, Margot Martindale appeared in just about every episode, whereas this year she just had kind of a few cameos throughout the season, I guess whenever she happened to be available to film. Uh, so I think that's unfortunate. People sometimes compare it to Justified, saying, Justified got a lot of nominations in its second season, which is true, but Justified also didn't really have any buzz its first season. Uh, nobody was calling it the best show uh, at the time. It didn't have Margot Martindale. So the second season was when it really arrived, whereas the Americans already had all those factories going in last year, and they still couldn't get it. Charlie, I don't buy this, do you? I think I think we're going to see at least uh, Matthew Reese or Kerry Russell for an Emmy nomination. I think there's something out there that we're not initially uh, giving credit for. I mean, there's an interesting thing if you look at the predictions of the experts versus the editors at Gold Derby. The ex Half of the experts, half, 50%, say that it's going to be nominated for Best Drama Series. Uh, quite a few say Kerry Russell will get in. Just a couple of the 15 we have so far say that Reese will get in. Now, I think uh, the, 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 there's very little love among the editors. There's very little for Americans in any category. So uh, we have a, hi uh, a history or a tendency to, to downplay it, but um, does the American, the question I have for you is, does the Americans have a chance, a realistic chance to pop up in the top category at the Emmys? My guess right now is no. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think so. It just doesn't seem like it has that sort of oom factor, especially with the emergence now of True Detective. If True Detective had, stay, had stayed where we thought it was going to stay in the miniseries race, I think that we would see that we could see like Masters of Sex or The Americans pop up one of those cat in some of those categories. But with um, with uh, the True Detective taking that taking that spot taking that spot, 
uh, in both a- at least both actor and in there actor. are six spots, Charlie. But it's what very do you mean crowded. That slot. Give me a break. You guys just refuse to see the obvious. I it's love that- the Americans. Do it's- not get me wrong. I would love to see it nominated, but I just don't think it's going to happen. If no, I'm proven give me wrong, a real, I will be so happy. Would you give me I a real reason? On my face. Then give me a real reason, Charlie, rather than it doesn't have the oomph. Obviously, it has the oomph. The experts are saying it's got the oomph. The, the experts. And, and, and they, and they the did better. The critics. They did better than the, ex- the editors last year at the predictions, by the way, at Gold Derby. Uh, number one, they, cr- they creamed us, and uh, normally it's the other way around. And they just uh, heaped lots of love on it in their own awards. So, Marcus, put some uh, sanity into this. Uh, does the Americans have a shot at one of the top three awards, actor, actress, or um, or series? A shot. But let's put it this way. Like Over the past 15 years, I think there were eight dramas that got nominated for season two after being snubbed in season one. There was, I don't have my list in front of me, but... True Blood got nominated in season two. Boston Legal got nominated in season three. Um, there are others. There are eight others. I wish I had my list. But yeah, it can happen. It happens all the time that something is snubbed in season one and gets nominated in season two. It's just that this year is so tough because you have the Breaking Bad final season. You have True Detective, the, the resurgence of The Good Wife, and then the Game of Thrones, the hottest show on TV right now. House of Cards. We haven't talked about House of Cards. That's five right there. And those are all in. I think we all agree those are in. Maybe The Good Wife is shaky. But, you know, that sixth spot can go to The Americans or Masters of Sex. Or, you know, what What else? It, it could Mad be... Ma- oh, I forgot about Mad Men. Downton Abbey. It's just there's so many shows that it's going to be tough for The Americans to fit in there. Poor Downton got screwed at these Critics Awards. This last season was uh, as good. Some some have said even better than the uh, the ones before. Let's talk about House of Cards. Riley, the, the critics didn't uh, give it much love, did they? They didn't, but I was surprised by the love that it did receive. Uh, in particular, the TCA gave it a nomination for Best Drama, which I believe they did not do last year. I think last year they nominated for a new program and program of the year, which takes into account uh, cultural relevance. Uh, and then at the Critics' Choice Awards, they I think they only got Robin Wright. Uh, she, I think, will win because she did have that, um, that big episode number four where she talked to the reporter. Plus, everybody seems to just love Robin Wright these days after she won her Golden Globe. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Back up a second. You just said that you were surprised. You, you think you got more uh, awards attention from the critics than you thought it was going to? Would you, are, are you are you aware, first of all, Riley? Are you aware that season two of, of House of Cards was far better than season one, and season one was greeted with universal acclaim across Hollywood and awards uh, in general? So, why would it be a surprise that it would get any uh, awards? Uh, in other words, how could it, was it overestimated at the Critics Awards? Look, Tom, I agree with you. I think that uh, House of Cards was much better this season. However, last year, uh, even though it got all the buzz, it didn't get a uh, Best Drama nomination at the TCA. Uh, Kevin Spacey wasn't nominated there. The critics are not as uh, enamored with it as you and I are. Um, okay, just just wondering, just wondering. I'm I'm uh, I'm looking uh, looking for injustice here, wherever it, whatever it is, and that it really is a screw job because season two of, of uh, House of Cards was one of the great things of t- television this this past year. Talk I don't about think they really like the end of the season either. I thought it came together very nicely. Um, they kind of just thought it got more convoluted and crazy, which was a bad thing for me. And talking about injustice, you know, why is Taylor Schilling not nominated for Orange is the New Black when it gets Best Comedy, Best Supporting Actress, and Best Guest Star? That's right. God That's damn it. Why not? <laughs> I agree. Let's burn the place down. I think that's just one of those times where they're trying to recognize uh, strange people <laughs> while overlooking. Well, that's what we can expect from a group of strange people like critics. Charlie, what are the thoughts do you have? Uh, I do want to just uh, go back very quickly to the Americans. If there's one category I do really feel it has a shot in, I think it's a Carrie Russell nomination. Um, I, I think she does have a real good shot there because it's not only 
uh, the strength of her on the show, but she's also uh, a veteran of television. She's someone who became a star on television. Uh, so I really think uh, if some, if the Americans can break through at the at least the Emmy race, uh, it would be uh, if for Kerry Russell. Yes, uh, and I I agree with that. But Riley, you just wrote, and I really agree with with what you wrote that Matthew Reese is really the most deserving on the show, isn't he? I love what you what you wrote about. Uh, about him as the anti-hero, the fact that this man does so many despicable things, but yet still is loved by viewers, and we root for him even as he's slitting somebody's throat. It's just like like Tony Soprano, we, you know, that he was a monster, but we were cheering him on and loving the man, right? Yeah, he, he's so good. <laughs> yeah, and Matthew Reese really pulls it off. Uh, yeah, but but I, I agree with you, Charlie. I think that care of the two, she probably has a better chance of getting in, just because. Again, cool factor, crazy stuff like that. Um, any other thoughts here, you guys? So yeah, moving to comedy real fast. Do you guys are we all in agreement that Orange Is the New Black is going to win? Yeah. Or or is anyone going to take a risk on something like Veep or Louie or Silicon Valley, Broad City, or Big Bang Theory? Mm, I would probably, I would probably uh, say Orange is the New Black has and probably has uh, de- probably has the upper hand there. Do we know Tom? Are, are the votes in already? Because season two just started two days ago. It's the hottest show right now. Um, are the have the votes already been tabulated, or are people still voting? Well, what when's when's the ceremony? It's next week, right? The yeah, on the nineteenth. So they could 19th. still be voting. I'm sure they're still voting this. It's all done electronically at the last minute. Um, yeah, so and, yeah. E- and everybody waits a little bit to vote. So yeah, Orange is the New Black is definitely going to win. I mean, season two, have you guys watched it yet? The, the episodes that just came out are so good. And I know they're voting on season one, but as we know, if something's airing when they're voting, that influences their, their votes. I still have yet to watch season one, and uh, I got scolded by my mother for that. And when <laughs> my mother, when your mother is scolding you for not watching the big hot lesbian prison drama, you know you've fallen behind. <laughs> Shame on you! I didn't know. Say go, your, didn't say go to your room. Did you? <laughs> uh, uh, right, Mar- uh, Marcus, you're the one with all the predictions. Run through your predictions yeah. for us. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually predicting kind of an upset for comedy actor, mostly because I don't see Louis C.K. winning for a third time at the CCTA. Um, Robin Williams, his show was canceled. Jim Parsons, he won the first year of CCTA. Chris Messina from Indie Project, it's a surprise that he got nominated. Um, Adam Scott, you know, he's really good on that show, but he's not he's not current enough. So I'm going with Thomas Middleditch for Silicon Valley. I was reading. Uh, Matt Rausch's review from TV Guide, and he calls him like the unsung hero of the show. And if, uh, if other critics agree with Matt Rausch, this guy's probably going to win. He has a real high cool factor. I'm surprised he's got 100 to 1 odds at Gold Derby for nomination, by the way. I, w- I think that's really uh, bad. I think we're missing the mark there because that show has some buzz, a lot of buzz, especially with the critics. So I could see that happening, yeah. Marcus, I think you kind of went through and knocked off everybody, which is why it'll be Louis C.K. Uh, oh, okay. I hope not. <laughs> I, I actually like the logic that you got on that, Marcus, with uh, uh, Thomas Middleditch. I think that's a pretty uh, sound logic you got there. I may, have to put, I may have to put him in my number one slot. That might also just be wishful thinking on my part, because I love Silicon Valley. I know... Uh, some people here, like Tom, uh, hate the show. Um, I've only seen the first two episodes, and I did load those. It was pretentious bore, but I, I do intend to give it another shot and go beyond that because I hear the show really heats up. You were saying that, right, Riley? In uh, oh, yeah, episodes yeah. three and four. Uh, I think the last two episodes of the season uh, were kind of what the critics were talking about beforehand, uh, which is weird because they didn't receive those episodes in advance. Okay. Sometimes it takes a while for a show to find its legs, but it, it just struck me as one of those smug shows that just uh, builds the most embarrassing situations possible for its uh, characters, and then it just it wants us to squirm with them, and they consider that humor, and it's enough of that. It's just that's everywhere, you know, that kind of kind of lowbrow humor. But anyway, 
I know I'm a minority on that. Riley, yeah. what are your what what are your predictions, Riley? Come on, I'm, you're always uh, pretty fearless on these things. Run through some of yours. Uh, okay, so I have some weird ones over on the drama supporting side. If you guys want to switch over to there, last year it was uh, Michael Cudlitz and uh, who was the other one who won last year? Um, let's see. I'll pull it up right now. This is also the group that gave John Noble an award. Right. It's and, and deservedly so. Yeah, right. yeah last right. year Monica Potter and Michael Cudlitz. So in the supporting categories, they're really not afraid to go uh, with somebody who is not going to get uh, an Emmy nomination. Mm -hmm. So I've got Peter Sarsgaard for The Killing and Melissa McBride for The Walking Dead. Uh, in terms of The Killing, uh, I don't know who didn't love that performance to watch the show. Uh, I obviously don't watch the show because I don't think we do that anymore. Um, but I think the critics will be able to find that performance. And on The Walking Dead, I don't watch The Walking Dead anymore. I only watched the first season. But every time I heard that show mentioned this year, people say, like, oh, did you watch The Walking Dead last night? Oh, that Carol is crazy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's Carol. Like, I actually watched the show for a season. I have no idea who that is. Uh, but to me, that just indicated the uh, impact that she has had. And, uh, I think I you're right. With because I tried to just choose somebody who's a little uh, crazy. I think you're right with Melissa. What was her last name? McBride. McBride. She she was so good in that episode, and they're not afraid to go with people that are not Emmy front runners. Um, I actually have Anna Gunn. Is that foolish? No. No. I have her in second. Okay, and then over on the, the drama supporting actor side, I have I actually have Josh Charles in there because he he was what everyone was talking about this year. Besides the merger, it was his character and what happened to his character. I saw more you know articles about it, and we're talking about critics. Critics write articles, and they were writing about Josh Charles more than anyone else this year. I do as well. I have him at number one in my supporting actor category. Interesting. Yeah. Last year on the comedy supporting side, they had uh, 12 nominees and only one of them got an Emmy nomination. And that's, wow. Or was it that's zero? No. Um, that's crazy. So. Do you think that the, when they do stuff like that, when they nominate people that are out of the box, are they, are they trying to get them Emmy nominations or are they just saying, we don't care about the Emmys, this is who we like? Oh yeah, it was zero, sorry. Um, well, let me give you a little insight on the, how the nominees are chosen at these um, award groups. The Critics' Choice Awards actually has a nominating committee that talks among themselves, like the Tonys have a nominating committee, right? And they, and they, uh, when groups get together face to face and discuss things, they uh, will have a, an, an agenda uh, will or a cause will be discussed, and they'll get behind it. At TCA, I believe. That, that doesn't happen. As far as I know, it's just everyone submit everyone voting there. I believe there's just a nominating committee for, for uh, Critics' Choice. And then everybody votes for TCA. And then TCA is just a kind of an, uh, an open ballot. So uh, that's why you see such a disparity, too, between the nominations. Even though there's a huge overlap in the membership, there's such a vast difference in the nominating procedures between the two. So in other words, at the Critics' Choice, to answer Riley's point, uh, the Critics' Choice, where they advance what a dozen nominees or whatever it was you just said, in the supporting categories that we don't see at the Emmys, it's because it's a nominating committee sitting around going, you know that Michael Cudlitz really does, is really underrated. Somebody goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he would even come up in a blank vote being sent in by members to determine nominees at the TCA. But when somebody speaks, you know, says that during a nominating committee meeting, and then all of starts going, yeah, 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 and that builds a kind of sense of group thing going on. Then it carries the day, and we show we see it in the nomination. It's interesting, you know, for all of us award nuts to consider these processes of of how nominees and winners are chosen to, to actually give careful attention to the balloting process because often that decides the nominations. For example, at the Grammys, where they have the runoff, where they take the top twenty vote getters in the category after a popular vote is taken and then for the top four awards for record song album of the year they have a secret committee that gets together listens to the music over a weekend 
in Los Angeles in hotel rooms and then talk among themselves. And so that's why when those nominations come out, you see a very kind of judicious uh, allotment of music genres being represented. For example, there'll be a jazz album, there'll be a country album, there'll be a rock album, there'll be a rap album. And so it's as if the group getting together going, now we have to make sure there's a balance here, men, women, old, young, rap, uh, the old stuff. And they tick through their menu and make sure everything's politically correct at the end. That doesn't happen when people are sitting at home with a secret ballot mailed in with their private agendas uh, from a distance. Anyway. Any more predictions that you guys have? Just jump in here before we'll wind up then. Um, yeah, I actually I have to run right now, but I was just going to say um, I'm going with Laverne Cox for comedy supporting actress and for Orange is the New Black. I don't know if that's a bit of a wishful thinking on my part or or something else, but I just think that this is the one you know person in this category that really stands out as being different than everyone else. And I could totally see them going over and Cox's way on that. She certainly is different. And she's on the cover of Time Magazine right now. Uh, and uh, she has a, and that just gives her a lot of external buzz right there. Especially in the lead up yeah. to a ceremony that's going to be, what is it, next week? Yeah, in like 10, 11 days or so. Yeah, so that's just, you know, perfect timing for her part. That's a good point, too. Uh, another thing I just want to say, um, uh, uh, the animated series program, uh, I'm predicting uh, Bob's Burgers is going to get in, is going to win that one. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I know I'm a, I've been a big cheerleader for the show Archer. It's won twice here, but uh, I, think it's gonna, I think they're going to look for something else, and Bob's Burgers has been a real hit with critics. I do have to scold uh, the, tele the uh, Critics' Choice people because you didn't nominate the show I wrote an article about, Rick and Morty, so shame on all of you. <laughs> Definitely. By the way, Bob's Burger won a daytime Emmy a couple years ago. So, uh, I did it win a primetime Emmy. It won an Emmy. But yeah, the uh, hmm. your Ricky show didn't get in. Yeah, my uh, drunk mad. They just don't have any love for drunk mad scientists. So. <laughs> hey, what about John Noble on Fringe? He was a mad scientist. <laughs> animated ones. Animated ones. They don't have. Oh, okay. a, yeah. That's bias. <laughs> final thoughts. Marcus, before you go, what, what, give us some final wisdom. Final here. thoughts. Um, I will actually be at the show. I'm very excited to go um, and see all the winners there. You know, if, if I had my way, I would want new winners in every category. Even though I love Breaking Bad and Brian Cranston, I want fresh winners each year. And Brian Cranston's won twice. You know, Louis C.K. has won twice. That's why I don't want him to win. You know, something... Something cool and unexpected is what I'm looking for. Now, you have attended the ceremony in the past. What was it like? Mm -hmm. The first year, it was, you know, it was, it was kind of new. There were ten nominees in, every, in all the major categories instead of six. So they got things like Fringe in there for Best Drama Series and, and Anna Torb and, and Post John Nova 1. I kept mentioning that. And you have, you have Busy Phillips, that one for Cougar Town. And, you know, that first year, I remember thinking, this, this is crazy. This is stuff we don't see at the Emmys. They're really going... Uh, in a new direction, and they've continued that. You know, after three years, this is the fourth year. So that's that's what I'm most excited for. I'm, I'm excited to see people win that haven't won before. Sarah Paulson, we chatted with her last week, and she said when she won last year uh, for for Asylum, American Horror Story, that was her first award she'd ever won before. So these guys really go for you know unexpected choices and deserving choices, and I can't wait to see what they do this year. That's cool. Final thoughts, uh, Riley. Yeah, like uh, Amy Poehler is another one. She won, uh, I think, back in 2011 for the Critics' Choice. And then uh, everybody's kind of forgotten that now, I think, even including her, since she didn't mention at the Golden Globes. But they do go for really interesting winners, so that'll be fun to see uh, those people give speeches. Uh, I'm also intrigued by the CCA Awards, how they're going to treat True Detective, which is uh, a mini-series to them, but it's also kind of a drama. So I think we'll end up seeing uh, kind of in inconsistent awards where it wins one trophy, but then it loses a lesser category because they like to spread the wealth. By the way, uh, Joy Berlin, who's head of the Critics' Choice, tells me that they have just deferred to the Emmys. If True Detective is considered a drama series at Emmys, it's considered a drama series at 
the Critics' Choice, they don't want to get involved in those kind of fights. You know, at the Golden Globes, they have an eligibility panel that actually uh, considers all the crazy things. For example, when Harvey Weinstein says, oh, My Week with Marilyn is a movie as a comedy. It's not, but they enter it in the best comedy category because it has more of a chance of winning some kind of an award there. Uh, th those battles will break out at the uh, HFPA, but they do not at Critics' Choice. They just we don't get into that. Whatever the Emmys say is fine. So, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of true detective love at the Critics' Choice Awards. Uh, Charlie, your final thoughts. I'd say True Detective has a good upper hand, and so does Orange is the New Black, but this is a ceremony that loves to show us uh, winners that make us go, huh? So um, uh, I, I look forward to that, to saying that a lot on June 19th. <laughs> yeah, and the awards will be broadcast, I believe, on the CW. Yes. So, uh, everybody can look forward to that. By the way, they are going to move networks next year to... to uh, something very big and glamorous. They have not yet been able to announce it, but the oh, Critics' right. Choice Awards are about to uh, take on a uh, take on a big leap. Uh, it's very exciting and it's well deserved. They they've worked hard through the years to uh, create a, a, a you know good and worthy franchise. All right, thank you very much. We will reconvene soon to talk Emmys. Meantime, uh, great insight, you guys, on the Critics' Awards. Thanks. <laughs>